Amen. I greet you all in the lovely and powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to have just a short service at the home. And then after half past nine, we will proceed to the church. So for all of you that are here, just give us a few minutes of your time. And I do believe today is a celebration service and a graduation service for our late brother Jeremy. So it is important that you are here standing together with the family to comfort them and be with them. By you being here, you are showing to them that you love them. They are not alone. Even through this morning period, they are not alone because they have you to be by their side. And even as we're going to sing and worship and also a word of exhortation, I pray that God's blessing will be upon each and every one of us. With every head bowed and eyes closed, and hand you to the return. You were the word at the beginning. One will gather, Lord, most high. Your hidden glory in creation. And I Yes, Jesus, 
your name is powerful, your name is mighty, Lord Jesus. Even in death, mighty God, your name is a beautiful name. In life, your name is a beautiful name, mighty God. In every aspect in life, mighty God, we can call upon your name, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. You're a wonderful God, you're a mighty God, you're the greatest comforter, mighty God. You're the greatest comforter. And you only can give us strength, Father, in this part, in this particular time of need, mighty God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, even for the family. Lord Jesus, I know, Lord, that your, your, your power is with them, mighty God. Your spirit is with them and that you will give them added strength, Father, for this day, mighty God. I thank you and I bless your holy name, mighty God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, just a few words on encouragement. Um, during this time, words will mean a lot to the family especially words of encouragement. And the best words of encouragement can come from one other but the word of God. So I'm going to read portions of scriptures that even as Pam, together with the family, will be encouraged. The word of God says in John 11, 35, uh, 25 and 26, it says, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me lives. Even though he dies, and whosoever loves, believes in me, will never die. So I want to say to you, Pam, today, that even though Jeremy is with the Lord, but he is, he will have eternal life. Amen. It also says, I know that my Redeemer loves and that, that, that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. It also says, if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. So Jeremy, even as he was upon the face of the earth, he lived for Jesus. And even as now he has been called to rest safe in the arms of the Lord, he is also still with the Lord. And that is why the comfort of the family is that he is with the Lord. You know, each and every one of us, sometimes we do cry. It is a time where we mourn. God, you know, when we look at it, we need to prepare ourselves so we will be able to be actually where Jeremy is. Okay, so it says that you, God has made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasure at your right hand. Weeping may right, uh, will remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Many people, when I, you know, quote the scriptures, they say, but it is so difficult. Yes, it is difficult. But over the period of time, it is the Holy Spirit that will bring comfort and healing, you know, to each and every one of us. And this day, you know, when we look at it, uh, late brother Jeremy is, is with the Lord. And you know, he doesn't leave us. He will be with us. You know, his memories will live with us forever. From time to time, we'll find that his memories will come, you know, through our mind. And we will think of him. We'll think of his life. We will think of the times where we were rejoicing. The times of happiness. The times of celebration. The times where the family spent together, even at home. All those memories live, you know, with us for a lifetime. And the memories that we have of late brother Jeremy will not be, cannot be taken away from us. Though he will not be here physically, but his memories will last in our thoughts and our mind for a lifetime. Okay? The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are, everla and underneath are everlasting harms. Jesus is our refuge. Right now we may not be the most you know, uh, comforting people because all of us are hurting right now. But I do believe that our Lord Jesus, when we call upon him, the word of God says, when we call upon him in times of trouble, our God will hear us. We look to the hills because right now when we look all around us, there is pain, there is 
disappointment, that is hurt, that is discouragement. But the word of God is saying to you and I, look to the hills where our God is. And there your help and your strength and your guidance will come from. So that is my encouragement to the family. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So God is saying to us this day, blessed are you and I that are mourning. Because God will comfort. There is comfort for each and every one of us. That is why Jesus, when he went and he said, I will send you a comfort. Comforter. And today you and I have the comforter to be with us. Amen. God is our refuge and strength and ever present in times of trouble. So we look at it, our God is our refuge. He is our strength and he's ever present help in times of trouble. So our hearts are troubling. We are disturbed. We are emotionally hurting this day. But I want to say to you that God is with us. We are not alone. He is with us. Okay? And it says here, As a father has compassion of his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Amen? As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you, says the Lord. So today to each and every one of us, even as the word of God says, like a mother, when a, a, when a child is hurting, when a child falls and gets hurt, when a child is sick, when a child is crying, you look at it, the mother will take the child into her arms and the mother will pacify the child. The mother will comfort the child. The mother will uh, strengthen the child. The mother will give words of, you know, uh, beautiful words of comfort so that the child will be pacified and the child knows that he, he or she is comfortable in the arms of the mother. I want to say to you today, to Pam, together with the children, our dear dad, and all those of you that are here today that are hurting and mourning, I want to say, even as a comfort of a mother, our Lord Jesus Christ said to you and I, he will comfort you. He will comfort you. He will strengthen you. He will be with you. Shall we bow, bow for prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word that has come. We thank you, Lord, there is power. Your word is truth and amen. Your word is active and alive. Your word is powerful. Your word is a healing balm, Lord. And even as your children need the word of God as a healing balm, you will come right now, Lord, and you will place your word into their heart, their mind, their thought, Lord, that even as they mourn, they do not mourn without hope, Lord. They have assurance, Lord, that one day we all going to meet in the heaven is Lord with Jeremy Lord even as the family tree has been broken Lord but I do believe one by one as the day because your word says it is appointed for once Lord for man to die and then judgment and we believe that one day we all Lord the time is for each and every one of us but Lord we pray that we will prepare ourselves I pray each and every one of us may we be prepared Lord when the call will be made Lord we will be prepared even as Jeremy was thank you for your blessing Lord as we continue in Jesus precious and holy name amen amen okay if um, we have one tribute to be done at the home if uh, Tease or Tarzan, could you please come forward as you will um, render your tribute. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Um, you know what? This is the first time that I'm, I'm honest and clear that I have to say something like this. I was not prepared for anything for this. But when Pam asked me yesterday, could you say a few words? I said no, because I haven't done something like this. My first time, so, um, it gives me great sadness today to say a few words on behalf of my friend, or I should say, rather Jeremy. I never grew up with Jeremy to know his childhood, but I do know his adulthood. For the last 17 years I'm living with my sister, Jeremy was in and out of our house. He, he loved him as a friend, brother, and a son. Jeremy was so humble, caring, and family oriented. He never said no to me or to anyone. I would miss, I would miss his early morning music and our late night shot together. It was the last person to speak to him before he went to hospital 
But I didn't know him to be there. I will miss you forever, Jeremy. May God rest in peace, Jeremy. I'm gonna miss him. I loved him for his music. He was one person. If he was living today, would have been full of brightness, full of music, full of love. Jeremy was on us. We're gonna miss you, Jeremy. Not only I, everyone, all of your friends, everybody will love you. Miss you. And God bless. And God bless. But he's going to rest in peace. He's going to one is there. I know. He's going to rest in peace. Yeah. Okay. For those, thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jess, for that uh, tribute. For those of you who haven't viewed the face and you are not coming to the church, we're going to give you a few minutes before we actually depart from here into the church. And could all the Paul bearers please get ready?
Even as we remain standing, shall we bow our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, we come to the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we gather in your name. We thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding. We thank you, Lord, even as you come with this funeral service into your hands. Whatever will be said or done, your name be honored, your name be praised. We thank you, Lord, for your comfort, Holy Spirit, upon the family. In such a difficult time like this, we know that you can strengthen them. We remind you, Lord, that you are our joy, you are our strength, you are our peace. You are all together lovely. So we just bless you and thank you. And everybody said, Amen. You may, you may be seated. We want to open the casket a little. And give an opportunity to uh, those that came directly to the church to come and view the place. We will start with the service, number five of this time. Thank you.
Can we bring you to close the, ca the casket? <clears throat> and thereafter we can commence with the service. I tell me if you like me. Uh, dear beloved, we are gathered here today to pay our final tribute of respect to uh, late Jeremy Chetty, to members of the family who mourn your loss. We especially offer our deepest condolences and sincere sympathy. May we share with you the comfort ordered by God's word for such a time as this. The Bible says in John chapter 14, Verses 1 to 3, Jesus speaking, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. Shall we not stop feet? Shall we pray? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you realizing our utter dependence upon you. We know that you love us and you can turn even the shadow of death into a light of morning. Help us now as we wait before you with reverential and submissive hearts. You are our refuge and strength, O oh God, a very present help in the time of trouble. Grant unto us your abundant mercy. May those who mourn today find comfort and healing balm in your sustaining grace. We hum humbly bring these petitions before you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're going to get into time of worship, praise and worship. Amen. We have a great friend in Jesus indeed. He's the greatest friend. And we only can trust in that friend. We can't trust in any other friend. What a friend we have in Jesus is revealed and today 
These are the words the Bible uses. We praise Him. We give God the glory that Jeremy is the better place. Jeremy as a seed is inheritance. I'm quoting Bible here. A seed is inheritance. Right? And he has received salvation there. Okay? And he's saved in the arm of Jesus. He says, though you have not seen him, you love him. Now this is talking about us here. And when Jeremy was alive, right? Though you have, we have, none of us have seen with our eye, our physical eye. Right? But we love him. And, so, and if you look at it, why do we love Jesus? I talk to myself. When I came, one of the things, the first encounter I had with the Lord, right, is God's goodness. I encountered His goodness, how good He's been to me. I was walked into a church. I just prayed and I said, Lord Jesus, uh, I didn't say Lord Jesus, but I didn't know who He was. I said, God, I need a job. I didn't pray on a Tuesday, I prayed in church, and then on Friday, I actually go for three interviews, and it's confirmed that I can start on Monday. So I'm saying, many of you, I don't need the evidence that Jesus is God, but I pray and I call upon His name at any time. He answers our prayer. Can somebody say Amen? There are times He makes us wait because sometimes we don't even know what's good for us. I know I, uh, those young children, they see their mother and father driving car. They want to drive a car. I said, Hold on your feet, but we need to touch the pedal first. I don't know if I can. My daughter was young. She's sitting in the seat there and she holding the steering wheel and uh, trying to move the car. Across, took the steering wheel, vroom, 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 vroom. I said, baby, you can only drive, the sky is only going to go somewhere when your feet can use the pedal. Then you can. So what, what am I trying to say? We won't take a gun, and get, we won't take a sharp knife and give a small child. Yeah. So I'm saying all these things. Sometimes you and I, right, God makes us wait. Our earthly mother and father disciplines the children. God even disciplines. But the Bible says you love him. And even though you have not seen him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Right? And that's the hope each and every one of us. That we can continue on the face of the earth, no matter what may come our way. Hear me? Right? No matter how uh, hard it may seem, the Bible does say that, and it closes with this. Hear me? It says, you full of inexpressible joy. Right? For you are receiving the end, the result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. How beautiful the Bible is that each and every one of us. And so when we look at, uh, at, uh, at Jeremy, right, he has received the end result of his faith, which is very, very simple, the salvation of your souls. So we can rejoice today, each and every one of us. All you, the Bible says it's only salvation, nothing complicated. Call upon the name of the Lord, and He will answer thee. He says, uh, if you want to be saved, all you need to do is call upon His name. Let's accept Him as the Lord and Savior. So those who haven't accepted Jesus as, as uh, the Lord and Savior, it's never too late. Accept Him today. Say, Lord Jesus, I, I, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I put my faith, I put my trust in you, and I know that you love me, and you came to give me eternity. So their minds were not contaminated by anyone's other ideas. That's what it is. When you watch TV, you watch somebody else's thoughts, somebody else's. But they thought about God. They had no entertainment. Are you understanding? So this were uh, deep thoughts about God, about salvation, right? And yet Job came to a conclusion that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, and His name is to be praised because God is in control. John eleven twenty five. The scripture on the actual uh, uh, pamphlet. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Now, hear me carefully. Unlike any other person, including myself, I'm here, I talk about resurrection, I talk about life. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am life. I am life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And I'm sure many of you know, but to those who don't know, Jesus not only rose from the grave, he never only spoke about it. Physically, he rose from the grave. Hear me? Also, there's three other incidences where people rose from the grave. The first was when there was a young child, a young girl, Tabita. She was in a room and then she passed, passed away. 
Jesus goes into a room and just, he speaks to this young girl, a lifeless boy. In a lifeless boy. Right? He speaks, and what happened? The girl who was dead comes alive. That's first. Second, there was a funeral procession very similar to those, and I know you may have some questions in your mind. Why can't God listen up? Jeremy. Why can't God bring from the line if he has done it in the Bible? I'll explain to you. Second person was a man who was uh, uh, on, they were carrying him on a sort of, a sort of a scaffold, a table, and as he was carrying him to the streets, Jesus touches him. And a dead man, imagine that, what a scene that would be. A dead man just woke up <laughs> and became alive. The last person, and all of you know about this, John chapter 11, 25, where Jesus makes the declaration, I am life, I am the resurrection of life. The, the, in context, he came to Lazarus. He came to Lazarus' house. A sister brings it to you notice, you've come too late now. My brother has died a couple of days ago. Now, we talk about a person whose body has been embalmed, right? The organs taken out and whatever, spices and bandages and all. He was mummified put into a tomb. And Jesus came, right? He told them to roll the stone away and he made a statement in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And here, you try to figure it out. Your organs, whatever was missing, because he had to live, it was formed, the heart, lung, kidneys, all the internal organs. Right, you look at the bandages was taken out. And a man who was dead came walking, walking from the tomb. So God, that's the reason why you must believe in divine healing. Right? We trust God for divine healing. We know at times so many times people are sick and I don't know, we just lay the hands upon them and many of them were healed and delivered and free. But I want to explain a body in. I'm here to explain that although these three individuals was raised from the grave, they were raised from death, they still suffered a natural death. Hello? They still had to suffer. Lazarus died. I don't know how long he lived. This young girl must have grown up to be a beautiful woman. Maybe even got married, had children, but eventually she died. Because God's word cannot be reversed. It says, it's a point that a man wants to die. You only die once. And that's one thing that's certain. So none of us are excluded. All of us, we have an appointed time. So the reason why I'm saying that to you is that uh, we must come to a place to realize that in today's uncertain world, we're living in a very uncertain world. We are fortunate we are seeing the face of uh, Jeremy. We can pay our final respects. But let me tell you something. There were some people who were sick. They went to the hospital and they came in a sick coffin. The parents never had a chance to see. You hear me? Friends never had to see. Wife never ever saw her husband. So we thank God for his grace and an opportunity that we can actually uh, see Jeremy and say our final goodbyes. So I'm here and I know some people went to work, they met an accident. Right? So there's different ways. It's not the method that we tie. Understand something. And the point I'm trying to bring across today is that all of us will die. All of us, we have an appointment. But through it all, that's the reason why I opened up when we go to first Peter. All of us, we are given the gift of eternal life. It's a gift that Jesus gives. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 7 is a very sobering thought. For we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. I remind each and every one of you because you know why? You're going to walk out having reverence for God. Having respect for God. Having respect for what God does in His time. Because you and I, we don't know. Nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. And I'll stop right there. It was a bow in prayer and I was to Jenny to pray. Father, we bless your name. We honor you. We thank you, Lord, for the comforting words that come even through the word of God. 
Lord, we are comforted to know that we are not alone, that you are with us. And we thank you, mighty God, that your word will be embedded in our hearts, that in times, Lord, when we are mourning, we could, Lord, be encouraged and strengthened and edified and blessed by your word. And I thank you, Lord, for the continuation of the service, that somebody, Lord, will sense your love, your presence. Somebody, Lord, will know that there is a heavenly Father who will never leave us, nor forsake us, who will be with us right up until the end. We thank you for your blessing and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We do have a few tributes. So even as I call your names, you can please come forward and offer your tribute. Right, first of all, I call Peyton. We'll come forward and offer a tribute. She's the eldest daughter, Jeremy. Good day to one and all. Today I will be paying a tribute to my May your soul rest in peace, Uncle Jeremy. I will always love you. I know that even though you are gone, you are still here with us in the leaves of the trees. Now that your journey has ended, your spirit, your spirit has ascended, claiming the great rewards with Jesus our Lord and Savior. I will always love you and miss you. Uncle Jeremy, thank you. Okay, next, uh, the family is very emotional. I'm pretty concerned upon them. The wife, I'm the first one you to speak. A good captain to say a few words on uh, Pamela's behalf. Hi everyone, uh, I would like to greet you all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I will, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Catherine and I will be conducting a speech on behalf of Pam. We are gathering here today, and we are not to mourn, but to celebrate the life of a dynamic individual, Jeremy Michetti. Jeremy's death was sudden, and we are all still reading from the shock that this is reality. We could not let this day go by without acknowledging his qualities and our memories together. His love for his children and myself was apparent in everything he did and said. I will never forget how Jeremy always went out of his way to make life fun for us. Jeremy, you enjoyed the simple things in life as long as you had other people to share them with. In our 12 years of marriage, you have given me the greatest gifts that I could ever have asked for. Which, are, which is our two beautiful daughters, Peyton and Paige. You were a good husband and father, and that makes it all the more difficult to say goodbye. Your presence always brought about laughter, joy, and happiness amongst all. We will forever remember your jovial nature, your humbleness, and your willingness to help anyone in need. No was never in your vocabulary. The illness that you developed in the last two years was tough on us all. However, it taught you and the rest of us to value life and it gave us more time to bond as a family. I know that you are reunited now with your mom in heaven, who you have so dearly missed over the years. We have also shared an unbreakable bond with your father and I pray that God grants him the strength to live each and every day without your physical presence, but you will forever remain in our hearts. We have both matured in the last 12 years, learning and growing with each other as parents, as well as partners. By the grace of God, we, will, we always manage to work through our ups and downs. To conclude, I'd like to say those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard but always near, still love, still must, and very close to our hearts. We will always love you, Jeremy. Rest in peace, my love. Thank you so much, uh, Catherine, for those uh, kind words and for those sentiments. Next, we can have Sharon, which is Renee, on behalf of the sister. You can come forward. Firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to greet you all 
For those of you who don't know me, I am Renee, and I will be reading out Cheryl's tribute, who is Jeremy's older sister. I'm not quite sure where to start right now, my dear brother. You leave me quite speechless. I can't begin to describe the immense loss in my heart, knowing that today is our last and final goodbye. Jeremy, I miss you so much, especially how you would, uh, especially how you would find your way to make me laugh shortly after I scolded you. You were honestly such a wonderful and humble man with a big heart, always offering support and comfort to the people around you and making them feel at home with your warm aura. Thank you for always being a friend and someone I know who is truly only a call away. I would like to say you fought a good fight and always living your life to the fullest and giving everything you have to every little task you have for. To me, you always seemed like a little boy trapped in a man's body with a hunger for life and a tendency to fulfill it. I will miss the bond we shared, which was indescribable. You were the light of the party and the laughter that kept our family going. It fills me with joy to know that you have finally got to go home to spend eternity with Jesus and our much and I much miss the love of mother. Rest in peace, darling brother. I will always miss and love you. Safe journey home. Thank you. Sing the same. I know not long is so traditional that we sing the song on the graveside. Uh, we don't have a privilege of being there, but some of us are going to be coming. Uh, to those who like to be the face, we have to pay our final respects at the church. Right? So let's each and every one of us has a timely reminder when we say our final goodbyes. That uh, the role is going to be on that. If you've got your hymn sheets, can we turn to that and sing together with us? With the top of the ball, just on. But there's a man that's better than me. The man that's better than me. There's a man that's better than me. Talk about heaven. And by faith we can see it afar.
could not be with us, but he uh, wrote his uh, condolences and also his speech and to uh, allow us to read. So many generous from Bhuvan. Greetings to you, wonderful name and follow on Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, this is a tribute from Bhuvan. I greet you all. I greet you all in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. 28 December 2021 marked a turning point in all our lives with the loss of a son, brother, father, husband, nephew and friend. Jeremy was called to rest in the holy palms of our Lord. I am Vivian, first cousin of Jeremy and am touched and privileged to be given the opportunity to speak on behalf of dad, daddy and family. We all grew up in a very tightly knit family and he spent most of his childhood with us in Unit 6. Jeremy, being the youngest of us all, was the most spoiled. So Jeremy is not considered a cousin to us, but a brother. A fond childhood memory is rolling down peridot with our roller skates. And Jeremy thoroughly enjoyed being pushed in a wheelbarrow. That was so much fun as we were growing up. His character speaks a lot of, of for itself. He was always charming, charismatic, friendly, helpful, respectful, and most of all, loving to everyone from elders to children. Jeremy loved to get together, and he was the heart of every party, loved to dance, and loved his music, very popular amongst friends and neighbors. No words are able to comfort the family right now, but I can say that only time will heal all wounds. This huge void Jeremy has left with us, left us with. No one will be able to fill. Jeremy would want us to celebrate his life because that is the type of person he was. Always jovial and never a dull moment with him around. Jeremy would, sorry, Jeremy, you will surely be missed by your family and friends you left behind. Your love and care for everyone will linger on. Our deepest condolences to Pam and the girls, Cheryl and family, and Uncle Bunny and Vigi. We suffered a great loss and our prayer is for the family to find comfort in the words of the Lord. Psalm 147 verse 3. He heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. And Revelation 21 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall be there more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. It is evident that the Lord is there to save our broken hearts. Count on Him. You will find comfort in His words. May you find peace and tranquility within yourself to help overcome this grief. Jeremy had a tough childhood losing his mom at such an early age, but now he is reunited with her in heaven. May you rest in peace, brother, a tribute to a brother, Today is full of memories of a brother laid to rest, and every single one of them is full with happiness. For you were someone special, always such a joy to know. And there was so much pain when he came to let you go. That's why the special message is sent from heaven above for the angels to take care of you and give you all our love. Thank you, Vivian. Amen. Okay, thank God for Vivian. And uh, identify children, he enjoyed life, he loved life. Right, and he always wanted the best. I know some people can settle for second, but Jeremy, he'll go the extra mile. And I know uh, even uh, Pep's family, together with Jeremy's family, very hospitable people who made the most of it, and very closely knitted, by the way. But right, so we thank God for that, and I stand as a witness to those words, as was a social. Right, next we have uh, Joanne. If you could please come forward. mentor, someone that he could relate to. 
Jeremy Chetty was a son, he was a father, a husband, a uncle, a nephew, a friend. He is so known by many of us as the life of the party. Jeremy loved life as much as he loved his family, and as much as he loved family gatherings, and as much as he loved good food. This was one of his platforms to embrace having fun, dancing to any rhythm, to any beat, the start of the party to no end. Jeremy loved sitting with all the older ladies in our family. This is because at the tender age of 15, my auntie Mogi was called to rest. So Jeremy stuck to all his aunties, like it was all the mothers that he had in the world, put him one. Jeremy created unique individual stories and memories with each one of us that will abide with us forever. I've known Jeremy his entire life. When he was a little boy, my late auntie Mogi used to say, please take care of this little boy. Even though he had an ailment at a very young age of asthma, nothing stopped Jeremy. Nobody could understand where he got all his energy from. From childhood right up to his adult life, Jeremy made the most of life. Today, with a broken, grieving heart, standing here to pay tribute to my cousin, Jeremy Chetty, I can say a limb has fallen from our family tree. Often we question ourselves. When we lose a loved one, we say, how do we go on? We have a million feelings, a thousand thoughts, a hundred memories, all of one person, Jeremy Chetty. No matter what anybody says about grief, the truth is, there are certain sorrows that never fade until our hearts stop beating. But our faith in God's word says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. Some of us sit with unanswered questions because most often death does not allow us to say goodbye. We sit wishing if only we had five minutes more before you passed away, to tell you all the things we need to say to you. But God willed it not to be. You suffer no more, Jeremy. Your pain is gone. Because God knew what was best for you. God saw you were tired as we watched you suffer and slowly faded away. God does not allow us more than we can bear. That was my last message to Jeremy while he was in hospital. When we lose someone we love, we must not learn to live without them, but we live with the love they left behind. Cherish every second. To Pam, Peyton, Paige, Uncle Bunny, Cheryl, Violet, and our entire family. Today we sit here to pay our last respects to Jeremy. My heart reaches out to each and every one of you. My prayer for you is God's infinite love, comfort, and strength. As a family, as a family, our world has changed, and our lives will change, day to day, because Jeremy left a void. But together, we must never forget all the love he showed us, and we know his memories live with us always. Rest well, my dear brother Jeremy. Love and mercy always, till we meet again. Okay, the next person. Okay, the next come forward, Ivan. to family and friends. This, this morning, we have come under very difficult circumstances to lay the mortal remains of Jeremy to rest. To Bunny, his father, 
Pam, his dear wife and children, Peyton and Paige. His sister Cheryl, Adrian and Rylan. When all foundations have been shaken, when you are left standing in the dark, and all I feel is my heart breaking, you still reign and you are still God. At this time, God knows your sorrow, your heartache, Jeremy and Cheryl lost their mom at a very young age. But, Jer but Jeremy never lost hope. During his schooling career, he entered into the job market, where he found employment. He always wanted the best for his family. Jeremy was always loving and kind-hearted to family and friends. This is what we see today because of his love for people and for his kindness, we are all gathered today to see what we see today. He went the extra mile to see to the needs of others first. Whenever my family visited on weekends, we could not leave the home. He had a way of making us stay over. Jeremy loved parties and family functions, socializing with music and dancing, which he loved the whole, day, the whole night till the morning hour. Jeremy always loved to come to Chatsworth to spend the weekend with us. His last visit was in November, where he spent the day and night with us. He was insisting to stop over on his way back from the chalets because we had prepared lunch for him and for the family on that day. His next visit will only be, he told, after Christmas. But God had other plans for Jeremy. God had plans to take him home. To Bani, Pam, and the children, may God's grace and love sustain you throughout this time. We as a family grieve with you, Bani, and the family, to Cheryl and Adrian and Lyland, Pam. You will always be remembered in our prayers. We pray for Jeremy every day. But God had other plans for Jeremy. And today as we come into God's presence, we want to thank the family and friends, even the pastor, the officiating pastor, for all that they have done and for being with the family and standing with us today. We know life is life is uncertain. Life is not a guarantee for any one of us. But due to COVID for this two years, there were so many of deaths. Where children were left homeless with no parents. Because when because every time I hear the siren in Chatsworth during the COVID times. The fear took my heart, who was next to Lord? And many were called away at a very young age. Life is uncertain. Life is not a guarantee on this earth. We are only passing by. The, the only time that we, we can enjoy life is when we see the gathering around us at this point at this time. Because of the legacy that Jeremy has left behind. We have to show love. We have to show kindness. We have to be gentle with one another. We have to love one another. Because God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. He came to die on the cross of Calvary for us. He paid the price. We can have the best of life. We can do the best of exercise. We can do the best of everything to keep our bodies fit. But when God calls you, that's the end of you. This morning we want to say thank you to one and all. And as we journey along life at, at this time, we pray, Lord, that you grant Pan and the children and Bani and the remainder of the family strength to see through this day. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this time with us. Also the sentiments. 
Uh, two recordings were sent to us from the Chinese friends, which should run on the now. We are here today to celebrate the life of Jeremy Chetty and to say goodbye to a wonderful husband, father, brother, son, brother-in-law, and last, but by no means least, a wonderful person and friend. My name is Preven and I'm one of many of Jeremy's friends. In the interest of time, it was not possible for every one of Jeremy's friends to stand in front and reflect the life of Jeremy. Therefore, we decided to share this message from all of us. Friends of Germany, Sir Winston Churchill said, We make a living by what we do. We make a living by what we give. If this is true, then Jeremy made a great life. Jeremy was the most giving and accommodating person I've known. Everybody that knows Jeremy knew he was always the life of every function. As friends growing up in the same neighborhood, we practically lived at Jeremy's house. Everyone knew if you wanted to laugh, have fun, or just enjoy great company, look for Jeremy. He welcomed and accommodated everyone to his home. Many years ago, about 15 close friends went away to the South Coast for a weekend away. Although it was my bachelor party, Jeremy took center stage. He had us in stitches that entire weekend. He pretended to be a pundit, and he was reading everyone's palms. In true Jeremy style, it was hilarious. Jeremy lived such a happy, fun, pleasant, joyful life that he will never be forgotten. And he will be dearly missed by all of us. Dear friends and family, Jeremy is in a better place than you and I today. Richard Russell said, lives are like rivers, eventually, they go where they must, not where we want them to. On behalf of all of us, on behalf of all of your friends, we will miss you. Rest in peace, Jeremy. Rest well on your journey, my friend. Today I speak with great sadness. Jeremy, whom I've renamed Jerome, has been my friend since 2008. We shared long hours talking as we worked together. He was a wonderful soul who always put people and, and relationship first. He was a kind-hearted person who brought joy everywhere he went. He did touch many, many lives and left many memories. He is gone to be with his maker and I know that he is in a safe place, free from all his pain and suffering. May our soul rest in peace, Jerome, until we meet again. You will be must Melbourne. Okay, we have two more tributes. And then after you have a chance to say a final goodbyes and pay your respects. I'll call from Melbourne. Oh, that's right. Okay. And last one, Belinda. Yeah. Okay, Belinda. Jeremy was honorable, he was kind, he was more than fair, he was sweet and so loving and giving. He cared with the compassion, especially when he came to his family and his two little girls. He worked so hard with everything he put his hands to and created magic. He touched the lives of many, including mine, taught me the importance of family. As we all know, Jeremy never said no to a party. He brought life to the party and we could always count on him for a fun night. He loved life, he loved us, and he loved his family. And we've all heard this before, but I hadn't realized it till now. Life is shorter than we realize, and we know, and we won't know what we have till it's gone. 
Jeremy was a great man and will be most dearly. I enjoyed the time spent with him. Jeremy was simply put one of the best persons that I've met. He was a good husband, father, brother, son and friend. It's sad we have to say goodbye to him today, but I know he's not in pain and suffering anymore. He is rejoicing with the angels in heaven. We miss you, Jeremy. You will forever be in our hearts. God loved you, and now you're home. We will meet again someday. To the family, Luke 1, 37. For God, nothing is impossible. If we put our trust in God, we can and we will get through anything. Okay, thank you. The last speaker we have is Ian. She's the last uh, Okay, I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Um, my name is Tisania and I'm the eldest daughter of the late Joey or James Chessy. Um, here today, so I'm just going to read his tribute. I would like to share fond memories of, Jer of Jeremy. He was a fun, loving cousin, full of life. He was not perfect, but he did some things perfectly. An amazing husband, phenomenal dad, hardworking son, and loving brother. He brought joy to all that came to all that he came in contact with, young and old. He had a zest for life, and he was the soul of every party. Okay, most of what I read now, like we've been hearing it throughout the day, uh, Jeremy was a lovely person. Uh, at family get-togethers, if there's anybody that was either withdrawn, sitting quietly, Jeremy would never leave them alone. He would find some way to interact with them, and that's how he made an impact to everybody that's either seated here or even those that can't be here today. Um, he was not somebody that you just know in like passing, okay, that's Jeremy. You'd have a relationship because that was the person he was. Um, also, I'd like to say um, Jeremy was like one of the richest people on earth because he had a wife like Pam. Um, and Pam, you know what, you have given Jeremy the best memories that he could ever have. Uh, the best sister. Cheryl, you have been such a support to him. You know what, today as he leaves, he leaves one of the richest men on this earth. Because there's nothing, no money, no, no nothing can give him what you have given him. Akulbani, you have given him so much of memories being by his side through everything thick and thin, from our family, Mark K. Chetty, all our Uncle Selan, Hachirina, my late dad, from all our, we are the nieces and nephews. But Jeremy was like our cousin. And what we want to say to you all, it's not going to be easy. But just find, find some solace in what you have given him, or given the best gift in life. It's all the slides that we've been watching, you'll have so much of memories and good time. Even last month, when you went away for the chalets, he was so happy when he came home. He had so much to tell us, and all he was looking forward to is the next get-together. He loved for family, he loved for fun. And you know what, from our family, we will always stand with you. Pam, we admire you so much for the wife that you have been to Jeremy. And I pray that God gives you all the peace and the comfort that you all need in this time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for those beautiful words. Uh, now that's the knowledge to play the slideshow. But, uh, even as we reflect, it's so true. All that they've spoken, they've said, you'll see it.
requested that immediately after the funeral service, go out to uh, Jeremy's home and uh, they prepare meals for you. They love you too. Let's spend some time with them. So after we leave the crematorium, the rest of friends and families, you can go to Jeremy's home and partake of the meals. It's a humble request by the family. Allah will the Lord of Amen. I greet you all in the lovely name of Jesus. Today, we want to say thanks to each and every one of you. The family wishes to express their sincere gratitude to all those who have supported us during this time of loss. Very especially all those that have sent messages via WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. Your encouraging messages, your prayer, your support during this time meant a lot to the family. And very especially, we want to say thank you to Terence, who has done all the running about, the arrangements, financially and supportive towards this family. We want to say thank you so much. And we know that the Lord Jesus is going to bless you. Thank each and every one of you all for every little part that you have played for this family and for the family need for the future and the arrangement. May God bless you and may God be with you. Thank you.
Thank you. 
Thank you.
Okay, we have very limited of time. I was going to need to pray. There's a in prayer. Of Job chapter 19, verse 25 to 27, the word of God says, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, I think we're in a very appropriate place at the crematorium, right? It says that after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see my God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I not another. How my heart yearns within me. We see that Job, he comes to the place where he realizes that even if his body is destroyed, and here we see after we leave in the next uh, 15 minutes or so, the Jeremy's body will be cremated, his skin will be destroyed. But the Bible says, that as Job said, he discovered that that is not final. What is created on the earth will stay in the earth. That which is eternal will go to be with God. And this powerful scripture says, I will see God with my own eyes. At the moment, I'm standing here on the face of the earth. You are here on the face of the earth. I am telling you about God. But Jeremy has gone to see God. And uh, he will see God with his own eyes. And not, but, uh, and not another. And Job closes off by saying, how my heart yearns within me. When, he, when you do see the glories of heaven, I tell you the things of the earth will be dim. Right? And we see that Job had a glimpse of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 52, also talks of the grave. The Bible says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flesh, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. So though the body goes to dust, right, in order for the imperishable to manifest, right, the Bible says that we will be changed. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh death, where is your victory? Now this is very important and a timely reminder for all of us. The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord wants each and every one of you as you walk away from the crematorium to know that death is a process which all of us have to undergo. When we undergo the death process, that which is eternal, that which is imperishable, goes to heaven, that which perishes, remain on the face of the earth. And the Bible encourages each and every one of us, and I echo what Apostle Paul wrote in the book of 1 Corinthians, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, each and every one of you, I say to Pam, I say to Jeremy's sister, father, the rest of family that is here, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And there's one more scripture I want to leave you with from the last book in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse number 30, which will encourage us tremendously. Here we see. John the Revelator writes, Then I heard a voice from heaven says, Write this, 
Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit. Now, I don't know if you ever heard that before, but you know something? The Bible says if a person dies, the person is blessed. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. So Jeremy died in the Lord, loving the Lord, knowing God. He put his faith and trust in God. And a person who dies in the Lord, blessed are the dead. Yes, says the Spirit of God, they will rest from the labor. So with, uh, I'm sure even each and every one of you, when you saw Jeremy lying in the casket, he is resting from all the labor, for the deeds will follow them. And how true, those who die in the Lord, they don't leave us. They remain alive in our hearts. Their memories are, and the precious memories that we have of them, we keep that till the day we are called to be with the Lord. The Bible goes on to say that those who die in the Lord, the saints of God, they are like stars that shine in the dark sky. So even as we bow in prayer, Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for the ministry of the word. As each and every one of us realizes that you are the Lord of the living and you are the Lord of also the dead. That which redeem the dead, Lord, is in your loving arms. We thank you, Lord. Even as salvation comes from the Lord, it's a gift from the Lord. And Jeremy has accepted it. And even as he dies in the Lord, he is blessed. So we thank you, Father, as each and every one of us are reminded that death is a process which all of us, it's one appointment which we can never avoid. It's one thing that we cannot plan for. Death can come to anyone at any given time. I mean, each and every, each and every one of us understand the process of death. And I mean, each and every one of us uh, accept that God is sovereign and God is in charge. He does in the heaven as He pleases. He does on the earth as He pleases. And everybody said, Amen. Okay, we can perform the final rites at the moment. And uh, I want each and every one of you to raise your hands uh, towards uh, the casket. And e even as I declare the committal. For as much as the spirit of our departed loved one, Jeremy, has returned to God who gave it, we therefore tenderly commit Jeremy's body to the grave. In short trust, and certain hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall give to us new bodies, life unto his glorious God. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. We commit Jeremy's body to the ground, even as in entering to the crematorium, from whence it came, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of our God. Thank you. And even as we bow for the benediction, shall we bow in prayer before we dismiss? It uh, comes directly from the word of the Lord from Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 to 21. Now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep. May he equip you with every good thing for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and forever. And the saints of God said, Amen. Okay, God bless each and every one of you. And may the blessings of God be with you. Thank you.